If you are looking for an interesting, humorous, yet humane television series, The Lawyer of Do Sun Era, would be a good choice. The series revolves around Kong Han Su, an exceptional defense attorney who is both cunning and kind-hearted. It delves into intricate legal cases and a political power struggle for control between the former faction leader, Wan, and the emperor. At the beginning of the film, the foreign cell, or in other words, the lawyer of the Du Sun period, Kong Han Su, is on a boat to Han Jiang under the Jiang franchise. Accompanying him was a marketer named Dong Kai who supported him a lot. The scene then shifts to the journey of So Wan, who encounters the youngest daughter of the former prince, Princess Li Yian Ju. She conceals her identity and lives under the name So Wan. To avoid revealing her status and causing harm to the court and the royal family, she entrusts this place to the head of the Hong house and disguises herself as her maid. In Han Dang, all small traders were prohibited from selling alcohol. There was a a small liquor shop that sold the exquisite traditional Wa Mai liquor, far superior to the liquor from the Jiang family's business, which led to an attack by the Jiang family's thugs. They beat and cursed, prohibiting the shop owner from selling Wa Mai liquor. Witnessing her son being brutally attacked, the mother ran out to intervene and stop the thug. The worried shop owner glanced at the mother hesitantly for a moment before swiftly running away. Seeing this, the gang leader instructed his cronies to chase after. They ran through the market, chasing each other. However, the thugs were determined to pursue the shop owner, relentlessly cursing and acting brutally. The shop owner ran to the stable at the inn, where he saw the exorcist, Kong Han Su, feeding the horses. He stopped and asked for his help to hide for a moment. Kong Han Su nodded and agreed to let the liquor store owner hide behind the horse. On that day, when the thugs came to inquire, he pretended not to know anything and then led the horse out, revealing the liquor store owner hiding behind. The thug immediately rushed forward, pulling him out and throwing him into the nearby shrimp containers. When the thug was about to strike a strong blow to the bar owner, so one rushed in to block the thug, forcing the thug to stop. He was extremely angry and threatened to hit So One when he was knocked to the ground by the princess's bodyguard. With just a few moves, the thugs were lying on the ground groaning. The oligarch angrily stood up and was about to continue fighting, but was stopped by his juniors because the Hong owners appeared. It seemed that she was a famous figure in the area, so his juniors advised him not to cause trouble with the Hong owners. Although he was not convinced, he had to leave with his juniors. Han Su saw the princess looking at him, raised his face and asked her what she was looking at, then led the horse away. The owner of the saved tavern was extremely grateful to the princess and the people at the inn for their help, but he was also very worried and didn't know what to do now. In the middle of the night, the liquor store owner stood drinking by the riverside when an unusual event occurred. Suddenly, lights on both sides of the riverbank lit up. At that moment, a voice from the boat invited him in. There, the liquor store owner encountered the exorcist Kong Han Su, the person who had set a trap for him earlier in the day. Now, he was told that Kong Han Su would help him sue the Jiang family's business but because he had previously exposed the owner's location, he no longer trusted him. As a result, early the next morning, the liquor store owner sought out other exorcists to file a lawsuit, but as soon as they heard it was against the Jiang family's business, they all refused. With no other options, and fearing that his family would starve if they stayed, he made the difficult decision to prepare to move his family to another place. Upon hearing this, so one immediately decided to go, relying on her older brother, who happened to be the emperor, for help. The emperor dearly loved this younger sister, so he agreed right away. However, he himself was also constrained by the courtiers and lacked real power, so the matter was quickly rejected. At the same time, Han Su learned that the owner of the tavern wanted to leave. He could not let this case be buried, so Kong Han Su, disregarding all consequences, set fire to their tavern to force them to bring a lawsuit. Pushed to the edge, the tavern owner had to seek Kong Han Su's help in suing the Jiang family. Anticipating the laziness of the judiciary in reading previous cases, he had set a trap that ensnared the external branch of Jiang's owner, influencing the verdict and forcing the judges to rule correctly, lest they be accused of treason. However, So One realized that Kong Han Su was the one who had set the fire that day, therefore, he was arrested for arson at the tavern. At this time, the mother of pub owner Park told the funny story that day. It turned out that at that time, he intended to commit suicide because he thought he was a burden to his son. Being old and sick, she couldn't leave her son alone because her father was busy and didn't want to leave the hometown where she had lived all her life, so that night, this poor mother tried to hang herself. At this moment, there was a cry for help outside, a cry to put out the fire everywhere at night. Looking at the ingredients to make wine, the mother hurriedly cleaned up. It was at this moment that a voice rang out. If you were going to die, why bother cleaning up? How pitiful would a child be if his mother committed suicide? It was these words that awakened a mother's love for her son. It can be said that it is thanks to Kong Han Su's foreign ministry that their whole family is so peaceful. Thanks to the pub owner's family not pursuing responsibility, Kong Han Su and Dong Kai were only fined 20 strokes. After learning how Kong Han Su had helped the tavern owner's family, so one had a different perspective on this person and wanted to apologize to him. However, when she arrived at the designated location, she couldn't find either of them. At that moment, Kong Han Su was at the tavern, huddled and hugging a drink. 
The owner of the Jiang Business Group happened to notice this image while entertaining guests. He sent someone to follow Kong Han Su. Unexpectedly, just as So Won was searching for Kong Han Su, she caught sight of him. He hastily took her hand and tried to hide in a corner, but he was still discovered and captured by Jiang's subordinate. But it seemed that everything was part of Kong Han Su's plan. Kong Han Su and So Won were kidnapped for revenge by Jiang's subordinates. Jiang intended to teach this presumptuous outsider a lesson, but at that moment, Kong Han Su asserted that only he could help Jiang. Upon learning that Jiang needed a painting to present as tribute to secure the opportunity to supply goods to the palace, Kong Han Su claimed that he could find the exact painting Jiang was seeking. Upon hearing this, Jiang didn't believe it, stating that he had searched many places and spent a lot of money but couldn't find it, so how could Kong Han Su possibly find it? Confidently, Kong Han Su replied that the painting was currently in the hands of a notorious thief who specialized in stealing paintings and kidnapping children, and that this thief was currently in prison. If he were to become this person's external branch, he could persuade him to hand over the painting. Through his persuasive speech, Han Su managed to make Jiang slightly hesitant. However, Jiang's inherent suspicion held him back from fully agreeing. To be sure, he declared that if Kong Han Su could accomplish this, he would release both of them, but for now, so one would serve as collateral. Initially reluctant, Kong Han Su eventually agreed under the influence of So One's trust and challenge. He and Dong Kai went to meet Pyo, the thief who had stolen the painting of the second prince of Min Kwok. After meeting and striking a deal with Pyo, the despicable kidnapper, Kong Han Su finally discovered where the abducted children were being kept. Kong Han Su, the external branch, requested that Jiang provide him with a boat, under the pretext that the boat would be used to help Pyo escape. He also requested that Jiang act as a witness to help Pyo clear his name stating that if Jiang testified, everything would be resolved. Though not entirely trusting of Kong Han Su, in order to secure the opportunity to deliver goods to the palace, Jiang agreed, regardless of objections from the merchant, Zhou. To demonstrate Kong Han Su's ulterior motives, the merchant Zhou informed So One about Han Su's intention to defend the human trafficker, asking her to obstruct him. He also ordered his subordinates to investigate Kong Han Su's actions. Suspicious but not entirely convinced, so one challenged Kong Han Su to a drinking contest. She proposed that if she got drunk first, she would let him defend the criminal, but if he lost, he would not be allowed to defend that despicable person. It seemed that Kong Han Su's plot had been thwarted. However, So One, trusting him, coordinated with him to deceive the merchant Zhou, causing him to stumble and be forced to betray his own master. During the trial, when Jiang testified for Pyo, he turned against Jiang, transforming the latter from a witness to a child trafficking dealer. This, coupled with the clear evidence of the children found on Jiang's boat and Kong Han Su's sharp testimony, completely shifted the course of the trial. Furthermore, the incriminating testimony from the merchant Zhou directly implicated Jiang in the abduction and trafficking of children. Jiang could not defend himself as revealing his encounter with Park Jisoo on that fateful night would not only incriminate him for kidnapping but also for treason. Consequently, unable to prove his innocence, Jiang was immediately arrested for kidnapping. As a result, the merchant Zhou was appointed to replace Jiang and presented the painting to the authorities. That night, when Park Zhe met Jiang, Kong Han Su caught sight of them. Through their conversation and Park Zhe's violent actions, Kong Han Su began to understand the truth behind his father's case, realizing that it was orchestrated by someone higher up. His father had wanted to change the legal system, which would have affected the interests of the nobility and merchants, leading him to be falsely accused of bribery and consequently resulting in the destruction of his family. Having recovered the lost portrait of the Ming dynasty quickly, they returned. On the boat, they saw a man tied up with a wooden sign stating that he was a kidnapper. The envoy also appeared, confirming that this was the thief who had stolen the second prince's painting. Although the outcome for this man remained uncertain, it was certain that he would not meet a favorable end, given his despicable act of child abduction. After becoming the head of the business group, the merchant Zhou invited Kong Han Su for a meeting. He began to inquire about the reasons why someone like Kong Han Su would assist him. Kong Han Su expressed his aspirations to become an influence influential figure across the land. Zhou chuckled and slipped him some money. After Kong Han Su left, Zhou instructed his subordinates to investigate him and find a way to bring Kong Han Su under his wing. He believed that this man was not a simple-minded person and that if he could be an ally, it would be beneficial, but if not, he must be eliminated immediately to prevent any future harm. That night, when the emperor passed away, Princess Yi and Zhu caught Di Se stepping out of the emperor's chamber. According to palace protocol, after the emperor's demise, the palace ladies were to collect the belongings of the emperor for safekeeping. That day, Princess Yian Zhu and Princess Hong sneaked in and hid a book that had appeared on the emperor's table that day. 
However, at that moment, the general and his subordinates arrived to prevent suspicion that the princess had hidden the book in her sleeve, while the upper palace Hong hid another book inside her body. After that, the book was immediately confiscated on the grounds that all documents and belongings of Tian Hoang must be preserved by the Huan sect. To uncover the truth and establish a just legal system in Dosen as her late father had envisioned, Princess Yan Zhu made the decision to enlist the help of Han Su, whom she saw as capable of using the law as a weapon against oppression. Exploiting the incident of Kong Han Su's group's boat being flooded, so one proposed that Han Su come to the island in exchange for accepting her as his assistant. With good food, fine clothing, and someone to cater to his every need, who wouldn't be tempted. Confident in her advantage, the princess was certain that Kong Han Su couldn't refuse her proposition. However, even after the boat was repaired, Kong Han Su still decided to return to the boat. It was then that the princess pointed out that if he calculated the cost of his and Dong Chi's food and lodging during that time, it would be more than enough, and so he should accept her offer to have free accommodations and amenities. Left with no other option, Han Su challenged So Won to make a sachet as fragrant as his own, promising to accept her if she succeeded. The sachet was a gift from his mother, a reminder of his guilt and the vendetta that haunted him. On the other side, Yu Ji Son's son was promoted to the position of deputy magistrate of Han Zheng Prefecture. Park Zhe organized a lavish banquet, and during the feast, Kong Han Su disguised himself as a wine servant. With a look of hatred and determination, he observed the enemy who had harmed his parents, seething with a desire for revenge. This was also the first encounter between Kong Han Su and Yu Ji Son, laying the groundwork for their complex relationship as both adversaries and later, as friends. At the same time, So Won encountered the wife of Park Zhe with horrifying bruises all over her body. She recounted how she had endured her husband's betrayal, but on one occasion, while her husband was carousing with his mistress, the courtesan Myung Wall, he boasted about how he had proudly caused the death of her parents. Unbeknownst to him, his wife was eavesdropping outside and heard everything. Realizing that her father had diabetes, the man had been buying him sweet cakes, exacerbating his condition, which eventually led to his sudden, fatal deterioration. Shocked and enraged, the wife rushed in and confronted him. However, the man, knowing that a wife cannot divorce or harm her husband, ruthlessly beat her. He then began to brainwash her with the concepts of the three obediences and the five virtues, asserting that as a woman, she must endure and fulfill her duties as a wife. Despite the immense pain and suffering, due to the constraints of these traditional principles, the wife could not retaliate against her husband and could only inflict pain upon herself to alleviate the sorrow, suffering, and regret of not being able to avenge her parents. The wife eventually left for the island. She planned to throw herself into the river, but so one intervened just in time. She promised to seek the assistance of the exiled official Kong Han Su to help the wife divorce the despicable man. On the other hand, in order to seize the wealth that his late wife's family entrusted to her and to bring the courtesan Myung Wall into his possession, Park Zhe falsely accused his wife and had her thrown into prison. Upon learning this, so Won and Han Su went to the prison to advise the wife to seek a divorce in order to escape imprisonment and retain her inheritance rights from her parents. However, Kong Han Su and So Won had a conflict during the discussion on how to file for the divorce. According to So Won, it was necessary to be honest and openly seek out Park Zhe's mistakes and exonerate his wife. Meanwhile, Han Su focused on the family's violent behavior towards him, especially Park's wife. To achieve this, the wife had to inflict a severe injury on herself. Worried that the wife might get even more seriously injured, so one refused to let Kong Han Su handle the lawsuit and insisted on finding another lawyer for the wife. Contrary to So Won's desire to use a fair and honorable approach to help Park Zhe's wife, Kong Han Su wanted to find a way to win quickly. He understood that in this world, those who hold power also have the backing of the law, making it difficult to overthrow them. However, the princess, who always resided in the palace, could not comprehend this. For So Won, everything had to be based on the law and for the sake of righteousness rather than personal gain. Despite this, Kong Han Su still supported her by providing the necessary information she needed to prepare. At Kong Han Su's suggestion, Su Won dispatched Attached guards to monitor Park Zhe's activities, while the rest searched for potential witnesses for Park Zhe's wife. They also took turns bringing food to her in prison. Meanwhile, with assistance from above, Park Zhe was planning to seize assets from So Won's father. He had familiarized himself with the law and was seeking ways to obtain evidence from So Won's family. Because this was a divorce case, no legal counsel was willing to take it. So Won took a while to find someone who was willing to handle the case. Thinking that everything was settled, she was unaware that the person she found was actually a spy sent by Park Zhe. Remembering Kong Han Su's suggestion, so one sought out Myung Wall, the only person who could testify that Park Zhe had personally killed her father. Unexpectedly, Kong Han Su also arrived at the brothel to persuade Myung Wall to testify against Park Zhe's murderous actions. 
However, Myung Wall refused as she was about to be married to Park Jia. To persuade Myung Wall, so one offered to help her become the owner of a cosmetic store, while Kong Han Su helped her see Park Jia's cruel nature more clearly. Indeed, as Kong Han Su had anticipated, Park Jia was a ruthless and suspicious individual. Just one sentence from Kong Han Su indicating that Myung Wall had met Park Jia's wife made him feel threatened. Concerned that Myung Wall might betray him, Park Jia murdered her. After several suspicions, Mr. Zhou officially confirmed Kong Han Su's ulterior motives. He secretly attacked Han Su, leaving him unconscious and then threw him onto a drifting boat at sea. Kong Han Su awoke on the boat and immediately tried to find a way back. First, he untied the ropes and then tended to the wound on his shoulder, which was bleeding. Looking around and unsure of how to return, he noticed a ball hanging from the boat's mast. Kong Han Su embraced the ball and then jumped into the water to swim back to Han Dang. However, due to the severity of his wound, Kong Han Su quickly lost strength and slowly sank into the river. At that moment, on the pier, the princess and the Hong family were strolling, looking into the distance, waiting for Kong Han Su's boat to return. Surprisingly, they saw Dong Kai, who should have been on the departing boat, running around looking for his and his brother's boat. It was very strange. Noticing the unusual sight, the princess looked into the distance and saw a ball floating on the water. Without much thought, she immediately jumped into the water. Fortunately, she was able to rescue Kong Han Su in time. In the courtroom, De Du Park, confidently dressed in his robe, was sure that he would win the lawsuit as he had prepared everything. First, he denied the accusation of killing his father-in-law, claiming to be a dutiful son-in-law, deeply loved by his in-laws. He presented the fan in his hand as a gift from his father-in-law, expressing his affection. The robe he was wearing was made by his mother-in-law's skilled hands. It was baffling how someone like him could remain so shameless. Moreover, his friends testified that his wife was an immoral woman having an affair with their servant. As the case was starting to lean towards De Dieu Park, he skillfully maneuvered his speech to turn the case around. However, when the issue of using honey cakes to cause his father in law's death was mentioned, he adamantly denied any involvement, claiming his expression was only a display of filial piety. Nevertheless, when Myung Wall appeared and testified that he was the one who killed his father-in-law with honey cakes, he could no longer defend himself. At this point, he even attempted to strike her, but was stopped by the judge. It was clear that he knew his elderly father-in-law had diabetes, yet he continuously fed him honey cakes, which were more poisonous than any toxin for someone with diabetes. Despite this, he still tried to justify his father-in-law's death as a sacrifice for his own advancement, showing his lack of humanity. With a clear understanding of the entire situation, Judge Yu Ji Son ruled the wife innocent and ordered her release, while De Du Park was immediately arrested and put in jail for further investigation and trial. The wife also requested to reclaim the robe made by her mother's own hands, as he was not worthy of such a heartfelt gift. Through this incident, Kong Han Su and So Won also came to understand each other more. They gradually developed unexpected feelings, as the death of De Du Park resembled the tragic fate of Kong Han Su's mother. Although the villain had been brought to justice, his death seemed too lenient compared to his cruel deeds. Subsequently, Boss Zhou sent his subordinates to intercept Han Su and Dong Kai on the way. Upon seeing this, So Won immediately pursued them on horseback. Kong Han Su and So Won returned to Chang San where Kong Han Su's family used to live. This place held the happiest and most painful memories for Kong Han Su. He had undergone some changes here that left So Won deeply curious. It was at this place that they witnessed the murder of a bride. The bride was a beautiful girl in the village named Rang Su, because she did not obey the matchmaker and married a man from another village instead of a lecherous and ugly man. The matchmaker held a grudge. She spread false information that Rang Su was a promiscuous woman. Her husband would sneak out to be with other men. Men would line up for miles to sleep with her. One gossip led to another and soon the rumor spread to other villages. Men in their drunken stupor mentioned Rang Su in a derogatory way, causing her husband to confront them. However, overwhelmed by numbers, they ruthlessly beat him. Rang Su tried to shield her husband, but they continued the assault. The blows to his stomach and head left the husband lying there, clutching his head. He was taken home with severe injuries and soon passed away. Before he died, he comforted his wife, Rang Su, even if I could go back, I would never regret not accepting what others said. Please be assured that I always trusted you. With these words, the groom departed in pain and resentment. Before his departure, Rang Su was in unbearable pain so she took the sickle to the matchmaker's house. That lady wore a tattered painted dress with shabby legs to find the person who destroyed her newly happy life. When she arrived at her mother-in-law's house, she still did not stop but was still gossiping with the neighbors next door, saying that the new lady was a person with a bad fate, a murderer, and after she finished speaking, 
she was immediately hacked to death. More than 10 consecutive slashes were all the woman's anger for that evil woman. Seeing her gloomy and deadly appearance, the women sitting next to the matchmaker were scared and ran away in fear. At this moment, Kong Han Su arrived. He promptly stopped the bride from committing suicide. How desperate did that young girl have to be to do that? No matter what happened, the chief ordered someone to arrest and tie up everyone present at the scene. Regardless of what Kong Han Su and So One say, after hearing the whole story from the new lady, Kong Han Su advised her to sue. If no one helps in the village, sue to the district. If no one helps in the district, sue to the city. He can act as the foreign cell to help her in this lawsuit. At that moment, Dong Kai also arrived and opened the door for the three of them. How However, soon the villagers were there. It turned out that Rang Siu's mother had asked the chief to help her. She agreed to receive compensation to calm the matter. However, if he does so, Rang Su will become a murderer and have to flee. Kong Han Su advised them to let him take the case forward on their behalf. But before Chief Lee's authority in the end, Tooth Siu's mother still asked the village chief to take her away and agreed to take the compensation money for her brother to take away. The villagers still did not let go of Kong Han Su's group who were captured and tied up and put on stakes. Luckily, the Hong owners came to rescue them in time. Returning to the bride, the suffering did not cease there. Rang Su discovered that she was pregnant and decided to ask Kong Han Su to intervene in her case so that her child would not have to live as a fugitive. However, her mother disagreed, citing the accepted compensation. If her brother was apprehended and the money was returned, he would not survive. According to her mother, since Rang Su had committed the crime of murder, she should let her brother take the money. It is difficult to comprehend how two women, both mothers, could have such divergent views. How could she think like that and act in such a manner? Overwhelmed with disappointment, Rang Su decided to proceed with the lawsuit on her own. On her arduous journey, she stumbled several times but still persisted, making her way to the district. Summoning all her strength, she suppressed her pain and used it as a source of inner strength to strike the resounding drums, discarding the drumsticks and using her petite hands to plead for justice. On the other hand, the three, Han Su, So One, and Dong Kai, were rescued by the Hongs and brought to an inn in the village for arrest. Kong Han Su and Dong Kai stealthily conducted an investigation. Kong Han Su encountered the village chief. The chief recognized Han Su's identity and threatened him to leave the village before revealing the truth of what happened that year. It turned out that the village chief was an associate of Kong Han Su's father. On that day, due to personal reasons, he had handed over Kang's judgment letter to someone else. This meant that if they could find the letter or discover who was in possession of it, the truth about Kong Han Su's father's case from that year would be revealed. Rang Su was brought before Commander Chang San, with the assistance of the Hongs and the princess. Rang Su met Kong Han Su to request his intervention in her case. Disregarding the chief's threats, he did not want to become a coward like the village chief. Therefore, Kong Han Su decided to take on Rang Siu's case, aiming to bring the matter to light and deliver justice for the innocent. Initially, Han Su and Dong Kai exhumed the body of the groom to conduct an autopsy. Numerous bruises indicating internal bleeding and fatal wounds were confirmed to have been caused by external force to the abdomen. After thoroughly investigating the cause of death and the wounds on the victim's body, Using his intellect and oratory skills, Kong Han Su gradually created conflicts among the three rogues in the village who were responsible for the bridegroom's death. This led them to turn against each other, revealing their violent behavior. First, he instigated simple suspicions against each of the three men, suggesting that one had revealed what the other had said. Even though the trio had kept their secrets for their own benefit, once this interest was disrupted and the truth was exposed, their true faces would be brought into the light. However, the difficulty lay in the figures at the top, the village chief and the commander. They, too, had concealed the injustice in the area for their personal gain. They even had people stop the news from reaching Han Dang in an attempt to cover up the incident. To further complicate matters, the village chief incited the villagers to pressure the leader to hand Rang Su over. Subsequently, he used his own authority to punish Rang Su by accusing her of causing turmoil in the village. Fortunately, Kong Han Su arrived in time to rescue the bride, Rang Su, employing sharp words and strong reasoning to swiftly silence the village chief. He explicitly laid out the events and the psychology of the individuals in the village. It was they who indirectly caused the misfortune of a family and trampled the dignity of a woman. After Kong Han Su revealed everything, Judge Yu Ji Son also entered the scene, having witnessed the entire episode. He promptly issued a verdict to interrogate all the villagers and elevate the case to the high higher authorities for the emperor to make a decision. As this was a case brought forward by the son of the prime minister Di Se, there was no opposition within the court to the release of the bride, Rang Su. Understanding the matter and receiving guidance from Kong Han Su, the emperor finally used the law to save his people. He ordered the release of Rang Su due to her pregnancy, with the promise that she would be prosecuted when the child grew up. This was truly a verdict that touched the hearts of everyone. The case of the bride's murder was closed, so one saw a completely different side compared to before 
and she grew to trust Kong Han Su even more. Han Su, in his drunken state, mistook So Won for his sister Eun Su and inadvertently revealed his identity as the son of the Judge Kong from back then. So Won stayed by Kong Han Su's side, listening and comforting him. Later, she and Judge Yu Ji Son took the intoxicated Kong Han Su back to the inn. After settling him, so one went outside to see off Yu Ji Son, who informed the princess that Kong Han Su was seeking revenge, and his target was the princess because his father died for the former king that year. Ji Son advised So Won to give up confronting her father, but she disagreed. The next day, upon waking up, Kong Han Su felt extremely embarrassed. He didn't dare to face the other two and instead went to the lake. There, he remembered yesterday's events, realizing that it was So Won who had comforted and encouraged him. It was thanks to So Won that Kong Han Su escaped the haunting fear of water from the day he was chased and nearly killed. Gazing at the moon above, he couldn't help but think of the beautiful, innocent, and kind-hearted girl, shining like the full moon. Thus, on the way back to Han Dang, as they passed by a festival, when So Won wanted to participate in the Hundred Family Ceremony, he agreed even though he was in a hurry to return to the capital to find the princess of the former king. During the festival, he even engaged in wrestling just to win a pair of flowery shoes to give to So Won. He hoped that these shoes would help the girl to travel far and wide, wishing her to reach even greater heights. Kong Han Su's actions touched So Won even more deeply. The more moved she was, the more she hesitated to reveal her true identity, fearing that once he knew, he would hate her for approaching and using him, as well as for being the daughter of the former king. Right now, her only wish was to bring happiness to this man. In another scene, the minister Cho Rang Yu and his associate, Joe, had captured two courtesans closely associated with Kong Han Su to brutally torture them. Unable to bear the agony, they disclosed Kong Han Su's true identity. Knowing that Kong Han Su's goal was to seek revenge on the prime minister and the former Huan faction, to overturn the case from the Judge Kang's past, they could no longer stay idle. They sought ways to eliminate him to prevent any repercussions. Upon returning to Han Dang and witnessing the plight of the two courtesans, Kong Han Su realized he was in an extremely perilous situation. In order to seek revenge and protect his own life, Kong Han Su sought the princess but was repeatedly rejected. Exhausting all other options, he sought out the fiancé of the princess, Judge Yu Ji Son. Yu Ji Son was astonished to learn that Kong Han Su didn't know that So Won, who had always been by his side, was Princess Li Yian Ju. He agreed to help Kong Han Su meet the princess on the condition that he act as an external advocate for the defendant in the case of the man killed by Li Bong Sam. Li Bong Sam had been a pillar of a poor family three years ago before the famine struck. With no other choice, his family was forced to make him a slave for the minister Cho Rang Yu. On that day, as Li Bong Sam was leading his ox back home, he witnessed Sung, the son of minister Cho, in a fit of anger, beating a man to death. Li Bong Sam and his son Yun happened to be on their way back and saw this scene. In order to save his son, Minister Cho manipulated the situation, falsely accusing Li Bong Sam of killing the neighbor. He also used the legal system to manipulate the psychology of Li Bong Sam's family, asserting that those below could not sue those above. Li Bong Sam's son, in an effort to save his father, sought help from Kong Han Su in the tavern. Coincidentally, Yu Ji Son was also present during this case, providing Kong Han Su with a better understanding of the situation. Because he didn't trust external forces or anyone else, when Kong Han Su questioned Li Bong Sam in the prison, he refused to say a word. Watching the child carefully as he wrote his confession, Kong Han Su felt as if he saw himself from that day, sitting there, writing the plea with tears in his eyes, hoping to send it up above to exonerate his father. He decided to help the boy as part of his plan for revenge. After Kong Han Su presented the case, so one rode her horse to catch up. On the way, they encountered some assassins sent by Minister Cho Rang Yu realizing they were not a match for the assailants. So One's guards quickly intervened to halt the assassination attempt. So One returned to the tavern, while Kong Han Su went to confront Minister Cho Rang Yu there. He issued a challenge and thrust his sword fiercely in front of the old man to demonstrate his determination. Aware that he couldn't match Kong Han Su in court, Minister Cho Rang Yu negotiated with Zhou, the owner of the tavern, to bribe Li Bong Sam's wife to persuade him to confess. Upon visiting her husband in prison, the wife found it difficult to persuade her husband to accept the fabricated charges. Understanding the dire situation of the family, family, Li Bong Sam decided to confess, not wanting to burden his wife and children any further. However, despite the hardships they were facing, the wife refused the offer proposed by the minister's wife, which included five pieces of land and money for their son's education until the imperial examination. Their son, displaying immense courage and understanding, remained steadfast in his belief to maintain his integrity and live an honest life like his father, rather than succumb to the deceitful ways of the aristocracy. Because of this, Li Bong Sam regained his courage and sought Kong Han Su's assistance in overturning the verdict. Kong Han Su went to meet Hin Dao to request a retrial, but Hin Dao, who had 
had a beautiful mole turned out to be related to the vice minister and was unwilling to stay still. He found every reason to reject Kong Han Su's request for a retrial. Because soon his daughter and the vice minister's son would be married, like a mischievous child, Hin Dao demanded a bet. If the vice minister's son, Cho De Sung, was not the real culprit, then Kong Han Su must die. It was thought that Kong Han Su would be afraid and retreat, but for a stubborn and obstinate person like Kong Han Su, this was just a mosquito. Not only was he not afraid, but he also agreed. Running out of tricks, Hin Dao and the vice minister orchestrated a peculiar scheme where Bin Duong cancelled the retrial by feigning to be chased by Dao Thao. Kong Han Su was rendered helpless. Meanwhile, they also poisoned Li Bong Sam in the prison. Despite resorting to vile and dirty tactics, Kong Han Su, being the audacious rogue that he was, sought the help of Boss Zhou and Judge Yu Ji Son to make Cho De Sung confess his crimes. Knowing that Cho De Sung was anxious about the evidence against him, he was always suspicious and under pressure from his father, which made him mentally unstable. Upon hearing the news that Kong Han Su had evidence and was planning to accuse him, he didn't hesitate. He chased after Kong Han Su, intending to kill him, only to fall into a trap laid by Kong Han Sus group. He confessed his guilt in front of many court officials. Under the pressure from the literary and military officials, the prime minister couldn't cover up for his son anymore. Cho De Sung had to pay the price for his crimes. His execution left Cho Rang Yu devastated. He became unhinged and started threatening the prime minister, ultimately leading to his own demise as the prime minister killed him in self-defense. Perhaps in the afterlife, in the realm of the Yellow Springs, the vice minister Cho Rang Yu could meet his son again. Hopefully, in his next life, he would become a better father. At court, the king was criticizing the issue of buying and selling officials. At least 20 people came to the prime minister's palace every day to bribe to become a candidate. I don't understand since when did people buy and sell positions? At the same time, the scandal between the father and son detectives was also a stain on the old Huan sect. The king is secretly criticizing the prime minister for taking power. Therefore, it created an unacceptable precedent. To punish this matter, the emperor ordered the abolition of the old Huan sect. To avoid this problem, Problem, the Prime Minister immediately asked permission to resign, using retreat as progress as truly an old fox. The officials of the Huan Old Sect hastily begged the Emperor to withdraw the order. Finally, the Emperor recommended a talented member of the Forestry Corps to hold the position. However, the General still did not give up. He sent someone to cause the death of the brother who was about to be appointed as a governor. It turned out that the younger sister that Kong Han Su still missed day and night was the owner of the pub. Management General. When the incident involving her parents occurred, Un Su was kicked out by her husband family. While wandering back to her hometown, she was nearly assaulted by a lecherous man. At this time, Un Su met General Di Se and received his help. The general deceived her, blaming the death of her parents on the emperor. Consequently, Un Su continued to work for the general, seeking revenge for her parents without realizing that she was aiding her enemy. At the same time, the bodies of Minister Cho Rang Su and Judge Yu Ji Son were discovered. Kong Han Su and Yu Ji Son arrived at the scene. They exchanged a few words, perhaps due to the tension between rivals, causing Yu Ji Son to clench his teeth for a moment. Nevertheless, he still highly valued Kong Han Su's talents and continued to support him. On the other hand, realizing the increasing level of danger, Kong Han Su was extremely worried about So Won. He proposed that they part ways and gave So Won a self-defense knife before leaving the residence. Returning to the case of the counselor Quan, due to the death of his brother, Quan Myung Wu was temporarily not appointed. Because of this, the emperor approached Kong Han Su for help in investigating the case. To contain the chancellor and the former faction, as well as for revenge, Kong Han Su agreed to assist. The next day, he went to the house of Quan Myung Wu to investigate. The case occurred at night, and the victim was killed in a locked room while drinking. Therefore, everyone believed that this case must have been caused by someone inside the house. The suspects were the counselor's wife, who had gone out to relieve herself at night and had seen a maid leaving the victim's room, the maid, who was engaged to a servant in the house but was still often called into the room to serve drinks, the third person was the servant who was engaged to the maid and, after finishing work, had seen the lady of the house standing outside the room, and finally, the victim's younger brother, who was appointed as a subordinate. Additionally, there was also the butler, but he had an alibi as he was seen outside on that night and had witnesses proving that he couldn't be the culprit. However, from a theoretical perspective, the butler appeared to be the most likely suspect. Nevertheless, he had evidence of his whereabouts outside the house that night as he was instructed by the owner to bring gifts to the neighboring village and had stayed there overnight. At the same time, at the residence, so one discovered that the mysterious benefactor who had been supporting her all along was actually Yu Ji Son. She arranged to meet him at the end of an alley at a tavern. There, she expressed her feelings and refused Ji Son's help before leaving. Observing that she refused his assistance and returned the letters he had sent over the years, Yu Ji Son was deeply hurt. He intended to burn all these letters, but then couldn't bring himself to do it. When Kong Han Su entered and saw that Ji Son's hand was burned, she gently bandaged and comforted him. Perhaps the shared suffering had forged a connection, and it might have compelled her to feel affection for the young master she had been helping all these years. 
However, her feelings were not reciprocated and Yu Ji Son left, pursued by the princess. Before the gates of the residence, he met So Won. Yu Ji Son pleaded with her to let him help, beseeching Princess Yian Ju to use him, to let himself be a shield to protect her. Even if she didn't reciprocate his feelings, it was all right. Even if he was just a roadside plant, neither adding nor subtracting from his age, if the princess could pluck that branch, it would be his honor. Afterward, as he held onto the girl he had unrequitedly loved all this time, Kong Han Su happened to lead the mule over and witnessed this scene. At that moment, Kong Han Su stepped forward to assert his claim over So Won. The two then mounted their horses and rode back to the residence together, braving the rain as the loving couple rode on the mule. Yu Ji Son returned to the bar where Kong Eun Su was waiting for him with unrequited love. Seeing Eun Su standing in the rain waiting for him, Yu Ji Son hurriedly dismounted his horse and put his outer coat over her. Then, Yu Ji Son instructed Eun Su to wait there for a while, while he ran inside to find an umbrella. However, when he came back outside, Eun Su was already gone. The next morning, Yu Ji Son sent someone to reinvestigate the case of Prophet Quan. The victim had a stab wound right in the neck. After thoroughly examining the corpse, they discovered that the suspect was most likely male because to create such a wound, a man's health would be more suitable. However, it cannot be ruled out that while the victim was drunk, a person sneaked in, whether male or female, and could use a knife to stab the victim's neck deep. Deeply. However, if they consider the psychology of the perpetrator, they can exclude some people such as Theme Tri's wife because she had no reason to kill her husband. If it was because of jealousy, then the wife should have killed her lover. Moreover, becoming a widow makes life even more miserable than being a slave. As for the mistress, it is even more impossible. She will soon get married, so killing the master at this time is not reasonable. What kind of woman would kill someone at this time? No matter how much hatred she had for her master, why didn't she kill before and choose the right moment when she was almost free? Kill him? As for the servant who was about to get married, there was no reason to kill someone at this time. Although it could be because of jealousy, with this servant's personality, it is impossible to have that courage and soon his wife will also become his, so there is no need for something very similar like that. Regarding the servant Quan Myung Wu, he was the one who suffered the most, and he was about to be promoted, so there was no no reason for him to cause this incident. Excluding other factors, the only remaining suspect is the steward, who had accumulated significant gambling debts and had just been scolded by the master for embezzling, providing a motive for the crime. However, there is evidence that he was away in the neighboring village after delivering gifts to General Chong Wan, as instructed by the master. Therefore, the only possibility is that his alibi was fabricated. But why would his accomplice assist the steward? At this moment, they discovered that the murder weapon was the lover's knife. Immediately, the lover was arrested, but Kong Han Su still saw many discrepancies in the case. Firstly, the knife was a remarkably exquisite one that, given her status, she couldn't have bought but must have been gifted. Secondly, even if she had supposedly cleaned the bloodstains, she wouldn't casually present the evidence to them so easily unless she genuinely didn't know that this was the murder weapon. Who would give this knife to her? Perhaps the steward, with whom she had a romantic relationship. This explained why she was delighted to see her lover return and why the steward could comfortably leave the knife in her room. To clarify the case, Kong Han Su pretended that the lover confessed to having an accomplice to make the steward falter. Then, he pretended to be the lover to reveal the steward's true face, but he didn't expect it to be as complex as it was. The mastermind behind the crime was actually the emperor's uncle, General Chong Wan, who, out of jealousy, had instigated the steward to kill his own master. At this point, everyone realized that it was a political conspiracy orchestrated by the Prime Minister Di Se to undermine the royal family's credibility and prevent the emperor from appointing his own people. Faced with this political intrigue, Princess Yian Ju chose to conceal the truth to protect Kong Han Su. However, Han Su disagreed as he was exposing the incident. Thus, the princess and the judge arbitrarily imprisoned the lover in a military camp, accusing her of fleeing. However, in his own way, Kong Han Su made General Chong Wan admit his guilt. Exploiting the general's jealousy, he pretended to reveal the clandestine relationship between the lover and the steward. This drove the general into a rage, leading him straight to the steward's location for interrogation. Consequently, they discovered that it was indeed General Chong Wan who had instigated the steward to commit the murder. Although General Chong Wan was pardoned with exile, the steward had to pay for his crime. This incident also made the Grand Empress aware that her beloved lady-in-waiting was involved with a humble foreign minister. She prevented Kong Han Su from meeting the princess by kidnapping him and throwing him far into the woods. Meanwhile, to harm Kong Han Su, the Prime Minister instructed his subordinate, Zhou, to hide the murder weapon on Kong Han Su's boat. Upon his return, before he could comprehend what had happened, Kong Han Su was arrested for the crime of murder. To protect her beloved, so one had to reveal her true identity. Despite this, Kong Han Su was sentenced to the heaviest 
punishment, Hin Dao, after being restored to his position, took over Kong Han Su's case, but perhaps what pained him more was the deception from the very girl he loved. He couldn't understand whether their feelings over the years were genuine or if she had merely wanted to exploit a skilled swordsman like himself. Resorting to his old ways, Hin Dao employed every punishment possible on Kong Han Su, from being beaten to having his legs broken, and so forth. He had to endure torture day and night, but perhaps the greatest pain was the deception from the person he loved the most. Gradually, he became despondent. At the same time, Princess Yian Ju also entered the palace, pleading with the Grand Empress to spare Han Su. She agreed to marry the Chief Judge Yu Ji Son to restrain the Prime Minister. Consequently, the Grand Empress agreed to pardon Kong Han Su and spare his life. Upon learning of his brother's imprisonment, Kong Un Su brought medicine and money to give to Dong Kai to support them in finding witnesses. Through the assistance of Kong Han Su throughout this period, many oppressed individuals had been able to achieve justice. Therefore, even without money this time, many people agreed to testify for him, from Boss Park, to the maidservant Myung Wall, and even Lee Bong Sam, the servant at the Minister Hu's house, as well as the pregnant bride Rang Su. However, Hin Dao persistently clung to the nonsensical excuse that these were all people who owed Kong Han Su a debt of gratitude and thus could not be reliable witnesses. Fortunately, a former thug who had worked for Boss Zhou came forward to testify. He claimed to have been observing Kong Han Su throughout that day and was certain that Kong Han Su was not the one who killed Minister Cho. He swore to take responsibility if his testimony was found to be false. Thanks to the thug's testimony, Kong Han Su was released. However, he had to endure severe injuries and lay bedridden. However, that night, Kong Han Su suppressed the pain in his body and returned to the military camp where he encountered and met with Princess Yin Ju. Meeting the princess again, Kong Han Su wanted to finally ask if her feelings for him were genuine. However, she replied that initially, she approached him to have him on her side, but not anymore. Nevertheless, Kong Han Su perhaps could no longer trust anything. He chose his words to hurt himself and the girl. Kong Han Su told the princess that they both might have been wrong, that she was not his miracle, and they were not fated. Instead, she was his curse, his ill-fated love. This statement pierced the hearts of both of them. They parted in tears. Why did they love each other but could not have a sincere conversation, choosing instead to torment each other with such words? The next day, Kong Han Su entered the palace to meet the emperor, and they had a conversation. Hearing that Kong Han Su was visiting the imperial palace, Princess Yian Ju hastily rushed there. Upon learning that it was Princess Yian Ju's birthday, Kong Han Su remembered how they had joyously celebrated during that festival, but it turned out to be all deceit. He wondered why? Why deceive him even on her own birthday? As the princess hurried across the bridge, her flower-adorned shoe, a gift from the festival, fell. She stopped, but Chief Court Lady Hong advised her that if she had given up, she should let go of the shoe. At this moment, Kong Han Su also walked by. They met on the bridge as Kong Han Su was preparing to leave. Once again, he picked up the shoe he had given her, offering it to the princess, but this time, it was not a wish for her to reach the places she wanted, but rather for her to find places where he wasn't present. His words were heart-wrenching, affecting both the speaker and the listener. The princess stood still, trying to concentrate unable to partake in the festivities with a smile on her face. Throughout that birthday party, the princess remained visibly unhappy. Yu Ji Son was deeply saddened to see her in such a state. Upon his return, he brought along a child who was the rightful heir in the land dispute case this time. Last year, two brothers decided to clear the wasteland. During the mining process, Yung Cho Su unfortunately caused an accident for his brother, causing him to lose one leg because he was so afraid that he left. Only his brother remained, still diligently cultivating that deserted land every day. In the end, God did not disappoint. After three years, that wasteland was successfully reclaimed by his brother Ying Cho Su. Looking at the fertile land spreading with yellow flowers, this hardworking man was extremely happy and told his son that his life might be a tenant, but his life will definitely be the owner, he will be the owner, of this land. From now on, he thought his family would have a more prosperous life when the land suddenly caught the eye of actor Wen Da Han. He used his own money to steal the land of Ying Cho Su's brother's family. Not only that, he also ordered his subordinates to beat the hoodlum's brother to death, and his wife was taken to prison. A family that was peaceful and happy suddenly had a disaster strike and everything turned to dust. At his last resort, the scoundrel had to ask Kong Han Su to sue the Han government. Money conquers the devil. During this lawsuit, Kong Han Su encountered many difficulties. First, when he wanted to ask the victim's neighbors to testify, Detective Wen Da Han arrested their relatives to threaten them. So in the lawsuit, they made statements that caused the lawsuit to fail. When it was discovered that the left detective had forged the land certificate, the general discovered that he had fabricated the evidence first. One wave after another, many hopes and then disappointments. In the end, Princess Yian Ju proposed a decision to suggest that Ying Cho Su forge a deed granting ownership of the land to the internal court, meaning that it would be the land of the royal family, more precisely the princess's land. This would ensure that Inspector Wen Da Han would no longer dare to seize the land. 
The Yung Cho Su family would still be able to enjoy the benefits of the land, but they would not be the official owners. However, Kong Han Su disagreed, arguing that doing so would set a precedent that would prevent the farmers from owning their land. With his quick wit and the support of the locals, Kong Han Su devised a plan to divert the stream onto the land, transforming it into a pond. Looking at the land now transformed into a body of water, Inspector Wan De Han was furious but was unable to take any action. As a nobleman, he did not want to involve himself in the labor of clearing uncultivated land. This was why he resorted to devious means to seize the land that belonged to others. However, he was unwilling to spend additional funds to hire laborers for cultivation. Consequently, he decided to return the land to the family of the rascal, Ying Cho So. Finally, with the assistance of the external minister Kong Han Su, Ying Cho Su was able to reclaim his brother's land. Ultimately, the woman was able to witness the fruits of her husband's labor over the years in their warehouse. Their child could finally have a brighter future. Kong Han Su, a gentle, kind, intelligent, and lovely girl, had her family destroyed and lost her parents and siblings due to the political conflict. Kong Han Su encountered Yu Ji Son at Eun Su's liquor store. To avoid her brother recognizing her, she let a female worker impersonate her to entertain the two. However, Kong Han Su felt something was off but didn't delve too deep, so he didn't realize that it was the sister he had been longing for. After Kong Han Su left, Yu Ji Son spoke with Eun Su. She revealed that she was an accomplice of the minister and had hindered Kong Han Su's progress with Yu Ji Son. That's why she didn't dare to meet the influential figure earlier. At this point, Yu Ji Son disclosed to her that it was her father who had caused the death of Kong Han Su's parents. Completely shocked, Kong Han Su leveraged her own identity to uncover the truth. The scene shifts as the dowager arrives and meets So Won to find Princess Yianju. At that moment, Kong Han Su also appears and overhears the conversation between the dowager and the court lady Hong. It turns out that the princess has always loved Kong Han Su and was willing to sacrifice her own happiness to ensure his safety. Understanding the reason behind Yian Ju's decision to marry the minister Yu Ji Son, Kong Han Su takes the princess's hand and they run away together. They reach the bank of a stream where they talk and dispel misunderstandings, leading to a heartfelt reunion. After resolving all their doubts, they become happier than ever although they may not realize that the pain and loss ahead may be even greater. The joyful gathering quickly came to an end, and when Yian Ju returned to the palace, she found the dowager waiting for her. Luckily, Yu Ji Son arrived just in time to return the coat to the princess, making the dowager believe that the minister Yu Ji Son and Princess Li Yian Ju had been together all afternoon. Thanks to this, the secret of her presence with Kong Han Su was kept hidden. Afterward, Yu Ji Son invited Princess Yian Ju to admire the moon in the rear garden. During their conversation, Yu Ji Son asked if the princess had heard about Kong Han Su's visit to the tavern yesterday. The princess was surprised and denied any knowledge of it. Yu Ji Son explained that she was there yesterday morning due to some business which might have caused Kong Han Su to suspect and feel dissatisfied, but it was not a big deal. The princess mentioned that Kong Han Su went there because he suspected that the tavern owner was an accomplice of the minister. However, it seemed not to be the case. She told me. Yian Ju was extremely surprised, but she eventually understood that the girl might also have feelings for the minister. Hence, she spoke the truth. Indeed, she had a sense of what it's like to have a younger sister. It's sad, but perhaps both the supporting female and male characters are deeply involved. Later, Yu Ji Son mentioned a strange incident that occurred that morning when she met the court lady Kong Han Su. She had a very peculiar expression, indicating that she and the court lady Kong had some kind of relationship. A girl who has a relationship with her brother, a different younger sister every day. To clarify this matter, Yu Ji Son sent someone to investigate Kong Han Su's younger sister. Additionally, leveraging her identity, Kong Un Su managed to enter the office of Minister Di Se and found evidence that he was responsible for the harm to her father in the form of a letter her father had sent to the emperor. When she stepped out, she encountered the minister returning, and filled with rage, she intended to use a knife to kill him. Fortunately, Yu Ji Son saw this in time and stopped her, persuading her to leave to ensure the safety of the only girl who truly understood him, the girl to whom he owed so much. Unfortunately, earlier when Yu Ji Son pulled Eun Su, she dropped the silver knife in front of Minister Di Se's door. Discovering the knife at his door, Minister Di Se began to suspect that Eun Su had uncovered the truth. The internal affairs of the imperial court were gradually becoming more tense, with various factions and individuals displaying suspicious behavior and increasing dissatisfaction with the minister. Meanwhile, the opposition faction had decided to align with the emperor, and the balance of power in the court was slowly tilting in the emperor's favor. As a result, Di Se decided to make
make a sinister move. He ordered someone to assassinate a court official and then spread the news that it was a crime of passion. The perpetrator and the victim were both involved in an illicit relationship with the owner of the last tavern in Han Dang. Due to this incident, Un Su and Ji Son were unable to leave the Han Dang city. Upon returning to the tavern, Kong Un Su witnessed his sister figure, a Ri, being bullied and quickly intervened. At that moment, the soldiers arrested her and took her to prison before she could reunite with her brother. Not only that, but the emperor himself also came to consult Kong Han Su. He needed to keep his people, so Un Su would have to die. At this point, Kong Han Su still didn't know that it was his little sister he had longed for day and night, so he agreed to help the emperor. He understood how the political game needed to be played. When Kong Han Su arrived at the tavern, he encountered the same courtesan who had posed as the other day, now holding the owner's hand. Seeing Kong Han Su, the courtesan A Ri released the owner's hand and knelt down, begging him to save her young lady. As the handkerchief fell to the ground, some objects spilled out, and Kong Han Su recognized them as the belongings his younger sister Un Su had taken with her when she left home. The hat that his mother had lovingly placed on Un Su's head, the pretty floral shoes she wore, and the clothes his mother had carefully prepared for her. At this moment, he realized that the young lady was indeed his sister, the adorable sibling he had always wanted to protect. Ironically, they recognized each other in this situation. What should he do next? Seek revenge or save his sister? How could he find and rescue his beloved sister, the only remaining family member he had cherished all these years. Finally, the two brothers and sisters met again after many years of separation. Kong Han Su tries to save his sister, but the emperor wants to condemn Un Su. Yu Ji Son and Yian Ju also begged the emperor to spare Kong Un Su. Anyway, according to the penal code, her crime was punished with 100 punishments and 2,000 miles of exile. But if acquitted, the prime minister's filming would not be eliminated, so the emperor could not respond. Faced with this situation, Kong Han Su had only one way to ask the general for help. He used the child book to exchange and promised that after saving Saving his sister, he would leave immediately. The prime minister agreed to coordinate with the princess to exchange Un Su after the verdict was made. To conceal his own crimes, the prime minister went to meet the king and suggested using the household law for the case of adultery to impose the death penalty. Before that, he had visited Kong Han Su and, on that day, used a torch to erase the tattoo on his arm, leading to poisoning and death. When the emperor arrived at the prison, he had met the chancellor here. Chancellor Yu told the emperor that Kong Han Su had come to beg for the old man's help to save Un Su and disparage that the emperor could not do anything in this country. The emperor went to talk to Kong Han Su. He should have opened up and persuaded the emperor. But he missed the opportunity to change the verdict, and their friendship became distant. The next day, Kong Han Su disguised himself as a eunuch and entered the palace to hear his sister's death sentence. He decided to use the wealth he had accumulated to ask Boss Zhou to save his sister. Over here, the princess sent someone to bring Kong Unsu. She advised Un Su to think about her brother and run away. The princess would find every way to protect the two brothers. But Un Su refused. She lured the princess away and took a knife to commit suicide. When Kong Han Su and Yu Ji Son arrived, Un Su was barely alive. She said to Yu Ji Son, Thank you, young master. Thanks to the young master, I was able to overcome those difficult years. She told her brother that only by doing so could she feel at peace and not cause trouble for him. Un Su wants to live like a human being, a human being with grace and gratitude. Her death was like a knife cutting the relationship between Kong Han Su. Yu Ji Son and Princess Li Yian Ju. Kong Han Su painfully brought his sister's body back to his hometown. As for Judge Yu Ji Son, he resigned. The princess was sick for a while. When she woke up, she went to see Ji Son to prepare for the wedding. Please protect your mother and Un Su. Han Su. Kong Han Su always remembered his father's words at his deathbed, but no matter who he was, he couldn't protect them. Both of them were dead. Mother died suddenly. Un Su died unjustly. Kong Han Su's only remaining relative now also left him, and he became disoriented and immersed himself in alcohol all day. No matter who advises, it won't work. Seeing him suffer like that, Princess Yian Ju felt extremely bitter. She was bedridden and unable to get up. But what to do is spiritual support for that person. The princess cannot help but become stronger. In order to uplift Kong Han Su's spirits, Princess Yian Ju decided to organize her wedding with Ji Son. The news was spread everywhere. This was not the desire of the prime minister. If he married the princess, Yu Ji Son would not be able to hold onto his powerful position in the government. Surely, he would not allow that to happen. On the other hand, the princess ordered Dong Kai to bring Kong Han Su back after talking with Yian Ju and resolving the misunderstanding with Yu Ji Son. 
all three of them decided to join hands once again to overthrow the Prime Minister. They planned to expose the crimes of Prime Minister Yu during the wedding. For the princess, this was for the royal family and for righteousness. As for Prime Minister Yu Ji Son, it was for his own family. He deeply loved his father and wanted to follow in his father's footsteps by dedicating himself to righteousness and justice. To defeat the Prime Minister, the princess and the Prime Minister previously met with Mr. Zhou, requesting his testimony regarding the assassination of the envoy Cho, but he demanded that Kong Han Su personally request his cooperation before agreeing. After regaining his spirits, Kong Han Su, along with the other two, was determined to overthrow the Prime Minister for his principles, ideals, and family. Bid farewell to the princess and Yu Ji Son, Kong Han Su went to the market to find Mr. Zhou. However, upon arriving at the market, all he found was chaos and no sign of Mr. Zhou. Suspecting an issue, Kong Han Su, Dong Kai, and Cho Rang Su hurried to find him. Trapped in the forest, the merchant named Zhou was hung under a piece of fabric that was slowly melting due to the fire. He cried for help with all his might, which alerted Kong Han Sus group to his location. Surprisingly, both sides had their weapons ready. Just as Kong Han Sus group arrived, the assailants rushed out. This time, the attackers were numerous, armed with bows and arrows. In the midst of the danger, Yu Ji Son arrived in time to rescue them. At this time, in the royal palace, Princess Yian Ju was preparing her dress when the general came to visit. He gave the princess a bottle of medicine and threatened that Kong Han Su had been poisoned. If the princess wanted to save that person, she would have to use her life to do so. Change. Hearing that, the princess hurried out of the palace to the wharf to find Kong Han Su. The princess felt very lucky, he was okay. However, the person who was hit by the poison arrow was Judge Yu Ji Son. It turned out that while stopping the assassin to let Kong Han Su escape, he was hit by an arrow in the shoulder. As soon as he discovered that the arrow was poisonous, Kong Han Su sucked the poison out of the wound. Thanks to the princess's antidote, Yu Ji Son was out of danger. Looking at the letter that Kong Han Su's father sent to the emperor describing the ambition and abuse of power by Prime Minister Di Se, Kong Han Su came up with a plan to overthrow him. During the ceremony, if anything were to happen to the princess, it could only be attributed to the Prime Minister. In this way, Princess Yi and Ju pretended to be poisoned to incriminate the Prime Minister. Prior to this, they had sent letters to the former officials of the Huan faction, stating that the princess was aware of Kang's previous judicial actions. This would be the reason for these officials to take action to silence the princess. Thus, if anything were to happen to the princess, it would be the fault of Prime Minister Di Se, who had instigated and indirectly harmed a member of the royal family. Although he was a corrupt official, he was also a loving father. If he did not confess, the blame would fall on his son. Therefore, Kong Han Su emphasized the bond between the two, ensuring that the prime minister would surely accept the blame. If he acknowledged the letters sent, it would be proven that he was the one responsible, and they could indict the prime minister. Kong Han Su continuously exploited the prime minister Yu's weaknesses. The man reaps what he sows, and the crimes of the prime minister were finally brought to light. To bring down the prime minister, the princess had resorted to poisoning herself. However, understanding prime minister Di Se's suspicion and cunning, Yi and Ju truly consumed the poison, as the royal physician stated that the princess was in a critically dangerous state. At this moment, Kong Han Su and the princess had sacrificed themselves. The emperor quickly ordered the arrest of the prime minister and a thorough investigation to restore the innocence of those who had been harmed and killed by the prime minister. After investigating all the events, the emperor issued an order to clear the injustice for the Kang's law and allowed Kong Han Su to participate in the imperial examination. If he passed the exam, he would be granted the desired official position, considered as a grace from the king. At the same time, Kong Han Su advised the emperor to spare the prime minister's life so that he could witness a peaceful and prosperous Du Sun without him. On the other hand, due to the strong toxicity that could not be treated, the imperial physician requested that the Empress Dowager stop the treatment for the princess, as it would leave many consequences on her body, such as paralysis or infertility. To conceal the shame of the royal family, the Empress Dowager announced to the public that the princess had passed away and organized a funeral. At the same time, she would leave the palace to go to the temple for blessings and would never return. During the funeral, Kong Han Su could not come close to the remains of his beloved. He was held back on the street and could only watch the procession slowly leave. Refusing to accept that the princess had passed away, Kong Han Su firmly believed that she was still alive. Before seeing the princess's body with his own eyes, he would not give up searching for her. After three years, Kong Han Su finally passed the examination and became a county magistrate. He had never given up on searching for So Wan. The emperor wanted to arrange a marriage for him with a relative from the central palace, but Kong Han Su rebuffed the suggestion preferring to find the person on his own. After all these years, he still had not given up on finding her. On the other hand, so one was still alive, although she
she had been treated, she had difficulty conceiving, which is why she didn't want to disappoint Kong Han Su. According to the wishes of the Queen Dowager, she pretended to be dead and left. During this time, she became a wanderer, walking the same path the man had once walked. Every day, she saw the images of the flyers Kong Han Su had posted looking for her, but she didn't dare to meet him. After the failure and the anxiety that came with seeing the envoy returning to demand his life, the Prime Minister became mentally unstable and forgot everything. At this point, only his son remained by his side to take care of him. Upon hearing Yu Ji Son recount stories of a peaceful and prosperous Du Sun, where people were well fed, well clothed, and enjoyed equality under the just rule of the emperor, the prime minister felt a sense of joy. He had always dreamed of such a nation. Perhaps the passage of time and witnessing the fall of many dignitaries in the struggle for the throne had worn down the determination of a man who had once yearned to create a world where people could live in comfort. This may well be the punishment reserved for the prime minister. Even though Yu Jo Son has helped the emperor and Kong Han Su greatly, he cannot completely overlook the sins committed by his father. However, as the imperial chancellor was instrumental in helping the king ascend the throne, Kong Han Su used this as a basis for his defense to help him escape the death penalty, resulting in the punishment of his offspring. Thanks to this, Yu Ji Son and Kong Han Su continue to assist the emperor in establishing comprehensive laws to grant amnesty in accordance with the emperor's wishes and Kang's judgments. As for Lord Zhou, after receiving assistance from Princess Yian Ju and Kong Han Su, he deeply regrets that if he had come forward as a witness earlier, perhaps the princess would not have had to resort to such methods to overthrow the imperial chancellor. Therefore, he and his subordinates are helping Kong Han Su search for the princess all over the country because, after all, he is the head of a trading caravan and can travel throughout the entire nation. However, for many years, there has been no news of Princess Yianju. One day, Kong Han Su heard news of a renowned physician in another province who was helping the common people, so he went there to seek treatment. After years of searching, Kong Han Su finally reunited with the girl he loved. She was now walking the path he once walked. Seeing the girl who had sacrificed everything, forsaking her royal status, Kong Han Su held her tightly in his arms. From now on, they were officially together. Princess Yianju no longer existed, only a girl named So Wan remained by Kong Han Su side. Perhaps in heaven, Kong Han Su's parents and sister also found peace. At the end of the movie, the four individuals arrived at the emperor's tomb, lit incense, and submitted the comprehensive laws they had drafted. This was the dream and the blood that the predecessors had sacrificed to pave the way for. With this set of laws, they promised to become kings and officials dedicated to serving the people and the country, for a better due son. Ultimately, the movie concluded with some regrets, but it can be said that everyone found their own happiness. The film showed us many aspects of injustice towards the impoverished common people during the Du Sun era, while also revealing the virtues of diligence, righteousness, care, and the principle of reciprocity of genuine people. And finally, righteousness will prevail. Thank you for watching.